Welcome to Eastgate Church. I trust you'll find this message inspiring and encouraging for you today. So we're going to get back to Gideon. We're going to break in at chapter 6 again is where we're at. And I want to take a little bit more of my time going through this rather than rushing through just to get to the points that need to be made up. As I said, there was a four points last week that I brought. And um, you can go and revisit that. I said this, when the children of Israel committed evil, God turned them over to the enemies. We were dealing with the God of love, but we're talking about the God of wrath. You've got a two-fold thing. He's a God of love, but he's a God of wrath. You don't mess around with God. Don't think you can just do any old thing, don't care. A big sugar daddy, as I brought out last week. Oh, he's a big Santa Claus. God's just, he's just love, love, love. doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't bother God. I want to tell you this, it bothers God a lot. And eventually he's going to come and he's going to chastise you. He's going to discipline you. He's going to deal with you. Because we need to know the God that, that we serve. The Bible says our God is a raging fire. Hallelujah. We need to have more respect for the God that we serve. When you get more respect for the God you serve, I want to tell you this, it's going to keep you on the straight and narrow. Hallelujah. It's going to give you a healthy fear of God. Not a fear that he's going to batter me over the head and plummet me with a, a, a hammer. But you'll have a better fear. When you've got a, a, a fear of God, I want to tell you this, it keeps you on that straight and narrow. You won't be too loose living and just loose talking. Hallelujah. Because there's this an immenseness of God. We'll just read a little bit here. We finished in... Verse 6, so when Israel were given over to the enemy for seven years, when we came close to the end of the seven years, Israel, it took them seven years to actually come to their knees, wasn't it? Seven years it took them to actually to realize their problem, and then they cry out to God. How many times do we can get you a downer, my friends, and you just let it go on and go on and go on until you get to the point now where you've just exhausted yourself? Hallelujah. So it said this, and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up out of Egypt. I brought you out of the house of bondage. I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you. I drove them out before you and I gave you their land. Also I said to you, am I the Lord? I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But you did not obey my voice and you get caught up with the people around you and you get engrossed with the world or the known world at that particular time. So we we'll see here that the Lord sent a prophet to remind them of their past history. You know, sometimes it's always good for us to remind ourselves of where we came from. We forget that sometimes. Sometimes we get saved and we, we, forget, we forget the past, don't we? We forget. I don't forget my past. I remember the pathetic idiot smoking too much hash, drinking too much, just acting like an absolute, I could use stronger words, but I'll just say idiot. Going nowhere fast, feeling an absolute loser. Just an absolute pathetic individual. And I, know, and, and I say that literally. I know I was capable of more, but I get caught up in the wrong side of the road and I just ran with it, get caught up with the tide and I struggled to swim against the tide. So great intentions. Yes, Amy, I even wanted to go to university. I even went, I thought, I'm going back. To, I went to need care and I thought, I'm going to get my hires. Chemistry. This girl's done very well for herself. Just qualified as a, a lawyer. And I thought, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back and I'm going to study. I think it lasted a couple of months. <laughs> and um, I think the chemistry, the maths, and um, some of these other big subjects just kind of overwhelmed me. And I fell back out the door again and get back into my existence. But I'd, there was something in me that thought I would like to do better. If I'd have probably put in the time, I could have did it. But I was just still caught up in that world. And so we're reminded of their history. They're reminded of his covenant promises to their patriarchal fathers and to them. And God has reminded me, do you not know what I've done for you? I brought you out of Egypt. I brought you into the land that I've swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your patriotic fathers. I've made covenant promises to them, which I've made to you. I've done all this for you, and now you turned against me, and you just re re reject me, and you get caught up with the gods of the world, and no longer were they worshiping God, were worshiping Baal, and many other deities that were around at that particular time. He reminds them of all of this. And God says, now, because you have done this, because you refuse to serve me, then you're going to serve the gods of this world who you are now running after. And that was a lot of debauchery, worshiping these foreign gods. I want to tell you this, there was a lot of sexual immorality. There was a lot of, there was a lot of terrible things that actually took place for these worshiping these deities, even to the point of sacrificing their children in fire to the foreign gods. What we've seen today, 
I'm, I'm cool with the kids running about here, so don't worry about a thing. What are we doing today? Do you know that they want to push the limit to abortion today to, to birth? Do you know there's people who are actually promoting that and suggesting that, that then that we should actually, now that a child now could be, could actually just allow them to die even when the baby's just been born? And do you know the logic behind this? I've heard some, one of these great uh, orators who said, well, they've not been experienced love. So although they've been born, but they've not had any physical contact, therefore they're still not technically human. That's the rational, the rational that they would say that to justify these things. But we can see there's nothing new under the sun. These things were happening back there and they're still happening to today and our day. And we think we're living in a modern day. Well, I'm telling you this, we're a modern day, but there's so much taking place. So we can see all of these things. So God says, okay, you can go and you can serve the gods that you wanted to. And God, as he likes, rejects them and turns them over into the hands of the enemy, which was the Midianites. Do you remember the word of God is very clear, doesn't it? It tells us that. If you, ref- as it says, if you refuse to serve God, then you'll serve the world. Whatever it is, you'll serve whoever it is that you're giving your heart to. You will serve them. Instead of being the head, the Bible says you will become the tail. So instead of being the top dog, you know, you'll become the tail. That's what it says. Instead, it says the alien in your midst will, become, will begin to dominate you. The alien in your midst is going to begin to dominate you. I believe Britain and our nation is, is cursed. We've rebelled against God, and don't say we haven't. Just look at the rules, look at the laws, look at the things that we are promoting. We've disowned God. We don't want nothing to do with God. We are changing the, the Judean Christian culture that we once enjoyed is fast deteriorating if it's not already gone. We can see the culture of the day, and we can see what is taking place in our midst. The Bible tells us these are the things that happen. When you reject me, I will reject you. Instead of the blessings, the curses, read Deuteronomy 28, and it tells you all about what happens about obedience and disobedience. At the very end, the prophet says to them, because you have not obeyed my voice. Well, my friends, if you want the blessings of God in your life, you need to walk in obedience. If you're walking in disobedience, you cannot receive the blessings of God. You can say, well, I'm blessed. Well, that means you're working hard and the world's turned out and is blessing you. It doesn't mean you say you've got God's blessing just because you've got financial gain and kid yourself on. I'm healthy, I'm blessed. That doesn't mean to say that necessarily becoming God. I could go out there and t- pick a thousand people just randomly who are all doing well and blessed and they don't even acknowledge God. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. There's disobedience and we can see that clearly. Listen to this and I'm just going to read these verses that really had an impact upon me and it's just further on from Deuteronomy 31 and it says this, verse 16. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, You will rest with your fathers and his people will rise and play the harlot with the gods of foreigners of the land where they go to be among them. And they will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be aroused against them in that day and I will forsake them and I will hide my face from them and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them so that they will say in that day, have not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us. And I will surely hide my face in that day because of all the evil which they have done and that they have turned to other gods. And so we can see here very clearly in Deuteronomy, not only in 28, but the blessings and the curses, but you can see that in verse, um, in, in chapter there, 31, 16 and 18. God has turned them over. Now the prophet comes and he just, he reads their character, he reads the situation to them. So God will always send a prophet ahead of God's judgment. We see that time and time again when God is going to deal with a nation and a nation is rebelling against them, God will send a prophet to them to expose their sin and let them know what the situation is and he'll bring that before them. And and, and this is why you've probably heard that you come in the mornings. My prayer is I always say, Lord, I pray, Open up Obadiah's caves. Jezebel, remember when Jezebel was killing the prophets and, and, and there was um, Obadiah, hid them in two caves, 51, 50 and another. And then I say, and open up Adullam's caves where David and his mighty men were getting trained under the nose of Saul. So under the nose of this, God was preparing something. Amen. He was preparing his men For God, there is going to be a pushback. Looks like the enemy has got all the high ground, got all the big guns, controlling government, controlling media, controlling everything. That's why we see the state of the nation. But under the surface, and Malcolm brought that always, it wasn't there, he says, but we have to not look at at the invisible. So we can see the the, the visible, but it's the invisible. God works there 
And I believe God is planning to do something. Hallelujah. This is why I'm attracted to Gideon at this moment in time. There are keys here when we can see what's taking place. So now they're in bondage, but the bondage is coming to an end. That their time of, if you like, you know, anger of God is now going to be coming to an end. Seven years, and God sends the prophets to the people to say, right, this is a situation. This is, this is a situation. I mean, I think the church needs to hear the situation because I, I see a lot of churches and we'll leave that with the Lord. Maybe I'm, in, maybe I'm in Mars someplace and I'm missing the moment. But I think there's something much more serious here and I believe the Lord has placed this in my heart. Glory to God. For us, and maybe further afield, we see now that he sends the prophets and he tells them where they went wrong. I don't know, would you see when you were a wee boy or a wee girl? And you know you did wrong. The last thing you needed was your parents to come. I mean, you, you knew you didn't, you knew you'd messed up, but you didn't need them to come and tell you, you know, just get your back up, all right, okay. Or you didn't do too well in school and there was somebody just, done, just told you. See, deep down within you, you know, you've maybe missed the boat. You don't need somebody now to come and reinforce that. But that's what God does. Because God will always be justified in his righteous judgments. Hallelujah. God's judgments are righteous. Righteous are not unrighteous. And God will always be deal with his righteousness. And so the prophet comes and just brings the highlights, their situation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But when his people came to their senses and cry out though, thank God that God is merciful. Hallelujah. Yes, he sends a prophet. But he sends a prophet ahead of, now he's going to do something. So God will say, do you know this? Stuart, you've done such and such, such and such, and such and such. But see when you come to there, so once God's read the riot act, he said, but now I'm going to help you. <laughs> once he came to the place of crying out with deep within himself and said, Look, I've, I've messed up. I've, 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 you know, I made mistakes. You know, I shouldn't have done that. I've done it, you know, and, 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 I, and I've, I've been, I'm suffering the consequences of that. But there always come a time when we get broken enough Listen, this is fantastic news, this guy's honest. Let's see if you can really buy into it, you know. Because, I mean, I think, and it really fits in my voice, is that we all struggle with, you know, just with confidence. We all, we all struggle with, you know, the, um, you know, who we are. And we, sometimes we know. And, and sometimes we don't need the Lord to tell me. I know deep down, you know, I know I shouldn't have been there, done this, got the next thing. But I tell, thank, thank God that there's a God, though, he knows we've made a mistake, but there's a God who's going to pick us up. Hallelujah. There's a God who's going to intervene. There's a God who remembers, you're still my child, even though you may have messed up. Israel was still his child. Hallelujah. They still were the people of the Lord. And yes, even though they rejected him and they, and, and, and they did, and, and they caught up worshiping the gods of this world, God says, I'm going to deal with you. I will not let this just go on. I'm, not go, I'm, I'm going to deal with you, but when you turn back, then I'm going to, and then, I'm going to, um, and then I'm going to reinstate you. Hallelujah. Thank God for the God that reinstates us. Thank God that forgives us. You know, we forget just before they, they went off the rails there, they, there was another time just before that. Remember Deborah? Ladies, you will all remember Deborah, a prophetess. God used this woman as one of the judges. You know, and people say, well, God can't use a woman. Well, he used a woman called Deborah. Although there was a commander-in-chief, Barak, who refused to go in his own strength. And, and she brought the word to him and says, go, Barak, and, and overcome the enemies. And Barak says, I'm not going to go unless you're going with me. <laughs> that just shows you the mark of the woman. He was a woman that was in church with the Lord. He was a woman who had the prophetic edge. And she goes, okay, but the, the, you know, but the, you know, Cesera, the man, you know, this great commander of the enemy, he says, you will not get on honor of killing him. A woman will get it. And we know there was that wonderful woman that's written about as well. But after they killed, the, once they overcame the enemy in that time, they had 40 years of glorious peace. Isn't that wonderful? Do you know the one thing about glorious peace in 40 years? Sometimes, you know, see when you've not got, a, you know, see when everything's gone just, you know, wonderful. Everything's, life is just wonderful. I was talking to a guy up there. His name's Alan. And, um, and I was saying, how's things, Alan? He went, he went, I'm living the dream. <laughs> I'm living the dream. I, got, I felt the same to him. What's that dream? So he, he's doing well. He's the project manager, doing really well with Synergy. His family's doing well. I mean, he, he's financially probably doing well. Everything's doing well. And he's loving his job. And I just said to him, so how's things? And he went, I'm living the dream. <laughs> and it was like, oh, hey, yeah. I said, that's wonderful. I'm very pleased. You know, that expression. I felt to say to him, you know, who knows the day is going to come and maybe that dream, that bubble dream will maybe burst. 
Maybe something could go wrong. Maybe your health will go down. Maybe you could get made redundant. Who knows? Anything could happen. And your wee dream world all of a sudden could be turned upside down. But I never went there. Maybe I'll get there before he goes off site. You know, within, I think I've got another couple of weeks of these guys been there and have an opportunity to share with them. My trust is in God. Hallelujah. I'm looking to him because he's the one that's going to sustain me and secure me. This world is very fragile. I don't care what job you've got. I don't know what, where your circumstances are. Everything can change in a hair and a breath. Just like that. Boop. Just one mistake. Boop. Everything can just change like that. Therefore, my security is, is in, in the Lord. Hallelujah. They can pick these things up. Digressed slightly there. So they had 40 years to get comfortable again. Everything was going well. And then they get slack. All of a sudden, now they'd rather than crying out to God, the great victory. So another generation all come along. And now they're just like, they became careless. Be careful of carelessness, friends. Carelessness, that's what's happening with a lot of the church. I meet people all the time. Carelessness. Well, do you know something? Oh, no, we're just too busy. Now, we can always be too busy, and, and I get there can be business. But with them, it's just, no, I don't see any great need. Don't see any great need. Come in church, don't come in church. What's the this matter? It does matter. I, do, I believe it matters. I believe it matters a lot. I believe we should be in fellowship, that we've got a part to play in fellowship. Thank God John brought a wonderful word of exhortation there. Thank God that Roy stood up and took an, op an opportunity. I was going to... I was, I was, I was going to call you up, but time's maybe just not quite there, but we'll get there. Wally, I was going to, Wally's got a great test in me, and he shared it with me, but we'll see if we can get that maybe next week as well, definitely. My hope is in the Lord, glory to God. And they get careless, and now they're, here's the point, now the enemy, now they cry out to the Lord, glory to God, and God just reads their act there. Now we're going to read a, a couple of verses here, and then we'll go, we'll go on to the man Gideon, Hallelujah. Gideon, a mighty man of God. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was an Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abzrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in a winepress in order to hide it from the midnights. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, O Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Where are all the miracles which our father told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord's forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and says, Go in the might of yours. You shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Imagine having an encounter of that where an angel appears and, um, and addresses you, O mighty man of valor. Glory to God. O mighty man of valor. And you certainly don't feel like a mighty man of valor. He greets him. The Lord is a mighty man. If God is for you, remember these verses, and we have them in the scriptures, isn't it? If God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. All things are possible for them that believe. Glory to God. We see, we can, we can all name these scriptures, can't we? Very clearly. Jesus says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, though I'm with you to the end of time. I think we have to keep reminding ourselves of this, because sometimes you ever feel home alone? <laughs> all of, you know, home alone, it's like, you know, I'm left all alone. I don't, I don't feel the Lord is with me. Listen, we don't live in feelings. We live in the Word of God. We live in the Word that God says that, you know, and we, and we have to realize and we have to affirm that, that he's with us and he's got my corner. Glory to God. So here's Gideon. He's hiding in a wine press, threshing wheat. And this greeting comes to him. See, Gideon needs some encouragement. We all need some encouragement, don't we? Uh, all of us, I need to be encouraged. In fact, the Bible says, encourage each other daily as long as it's called today. That's why we're called into fellowship. We should be encouraging each other, building each other up, helping each other. When one of us falls down, there's somebody there to help me pick me up. Or if there's a need, someone else can come and into that need. So Gideon needs that. For the last seven years, he's been worn down. Why? Because the enemy keeps attacking them and attacking them and attacking them. And for every time they get ahead, every time they get their crops in, the enemy comes in and just robs them. Just robs them. Do you ever feel the times that in your life, every time you want to try and get ahead, all oh, oh, hell breaks loose and you know you start to think you're getting somewhere and then all of a sudden it just everything crashes round about you. I've been there in the seasons. <laughs> and you go, what's, what's it me? <laughs> so he's a bit worn down. And, um, and to the point where the Lord now has to build this man up and he builds him up with these words. Or do you ever feel worn out? You ever had anybody looking at you and go, man, you look really worn out. 
It's not great encouragement, is it? You know, I mean, bags and DNA, it's not that. You're drained of any blood. You're just white looking. Somebody comes up to you, can see you're right. You look really worn out. A lot of people say that to me a lot. And I'm like, I'm not fine, I'm fine. But it was one of these women that get a wee bit of blush on me, get a bit of colour on my face. No, I'm doing okay. Worn out. That means to be exhausted. That's what worn out means. It just means to be, you know, just extremely tired, exhausted. Sometimes life can be like that. You know, sometimes you just, you're going through a season and I just feel worn, worn down and then eventually, I'm just worn out, man. I'm just done. That means it's just like, if you were in the ring fight and you go like the towel again, like, I'm done. I'm, I'm, worn, I'm worn out. I'm worn down here. I can't, I can't fight any longer. I can't fight any longer. That's what it means is. And, Gideon, and there's Gideon. He's probably feeling that. He's, he's hiding in a wine, a wine, a wine press to cause the enemy to save his little bit of wheat in case the enemy's going to come and, and, and steal it. That's what they did. They waited till it was all ready. And there he was. He was hiding out, out the way just getting a bit of wheat there for his nourishment and getting some food and supplements in case the enemy would come and steal it because the enemy was ruling the roost and they were just roaming around in the land. And as soon as they got, I started to get ahead, the enemy came in and the enemy was seeking them out. You know, we know that a lot, but don't we? And Jesus says, it's like the one who goes and sows the seed. The farmer sows the seed and says, and this, immediately the enemy comes and steals it. As soon as it's on the pathway, boof, the seed's taken off that. Other times the soil's so shallow and it's full of rocks, it, it, it rises up and it dies immediately, or else it's the weeds. It's again the enemy, it says the devil's out to destroy, the take, steal the word, or if he can't steal it, he's going to hinder it, or he's going to make sure that word doesn't go, become pr- productive in our lives. Guys, we need to think a little bit more about the scriptures. These men in particular have been humiliated. These are the men. This was Israel's mighty men. I mean, they fought a great battle just previous. They had an army. But because God wasn't with them, they had lost their, they had lost their zeal. They had lost their, their strength because they didn't realize their strength was in God. I and mean, all of a sudden, God pulls out. Now, I'm on, you're on your own, Jack. These men were humiliated. There they are, but hiding. They're poor women and their children. They're not able to care for their women and their children. Their children and their women are suffering. And it's the men. It's the men. We're hiding away in our wee caves up in the rocks. Out there, aren't we? Today, men are hiding today, aren't they? They call it men caves. When we think it's a good thing. Ma, I've got a wee man cave out the back door. There he is out the back door. He's got his nice big flat screen TV. He's got his wee bar. He's got the baby. He's got his music. He's got his sounds. And there's the wife and the children. They're looking out there waving to him like, hi. They're living in a nice big house and he's out there in his man cave. And he thinks he's ruling the roost. No, you're not ruling the roost, mate. You're at the back door in the man cave and your your kids are not here. Camley's in the house. It's interesting why they call it a man cave, isn't it? So I'm hiding. I'm out in the way. Me and my wee world in my man cave. I'm happy as Larry. Listen, these guys were having to hide. The men were humiliated, humiliated. They weren't able to defend their families. They weren't able to make provision for their families because the enemy was too powerful for them. They came in in mass and there they are. They're, they're, they're subjected, they're subdued. The fights went out of them. They've not got a fight. They've not got a fight within them. And there they are. They're just, they're really down. They're downbeat. They're worn down because the enemy's good at wearing you down. Ever been there? <laughs> just you just get worn down. You get worn down. You say, oh, "What the heck? <sighs> Can't be bothered anymore." And, and I've not got that. No, that steel. You know, to rise up and to and you know, I'm, I'm going to you know, I'm up for a fight. And so we can see here they're humiliated, hiding, and um, unable to provide for their children. That would be humiliating. That would be humiliating, wouldn't it? Or is it just me as a man that would feel that? that you know, that, that they're, they're standing there when any comes in. You have to stand there where they're going to ransack your house, grab all your corn and everything else and disappear. And you're having to stand there like that as they come in and just wreck it, take it all away from you. And then we'll see them next year and they're back again every time you think they're going to get ahead. You know, we're under a spiritual attack, friends. And that's what the enemy does with us. And for sometimes he's kept us down for too long, for too long, for too long, for too long. But here, I believe God's going to lift us up. Amen. I believe God's in the business of lifting us up. Yes, there will be a time and a season. And I believe this nation is under judgment. Amen. I brought that out last week. Just read about Romans. God says, I'll turn you over. I'll turn you over. Three times, I'll turn you over. I'll hand you over. I'll hand you over. When you sin, I will deal with it. God doesn't turn a blind eye to sin, friends. Get over it. Well, what's sin, brother? I'm not out there robbing banks and all the rest of it. Well, what are you doing? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you spending time in the Word? Are you spending time before God? No, I just sail around. You're sinning. There you go. 
If you ignore God and take nothing to do with God, you're sinning. You're nowhere. You, you, you know, you're, 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 you're just thinking, God, God's not important. I God, I'll, I'll catch up with God. I'll, I'll, I'll see you in a week or two. No problem. And then I'm sitting about a week. I'm watching telly. I'm doing this. I'm going up here. I'm going to the shops and all the rest of it. I'm on my knees crying out to God. When I'm not at church, I'm on my Oh, sorry, Pastor. I've been missing for three weeks, but I've been on my knees. I'm, I'm spending time with God. Well, praise God. That'd be wonderful. And then when you come into the house of God, we'll see it. There's a man in fire. Man in fire. Oh, how this nation needs to see men in fire. And women in fire as well. Hallelujah. The Debras. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So there we are. And then here's Gideon now. He's, I like how Gideon. He says, oh, well. Well, the Lord is with us. Why is all this happened? You ever seen that? What's going on? What's, why is all this going to happen? Where's, where is God? Where's all the miracles? I'm praying people for life, right? And Where's all the miracles? Where's all the great things that we've heard our fathers told us about the God that parted the Red Sea, smashed the Egyptians, wrought us out, took all our enemies out, gave us the land, Joshua and all the mighty men of God. He says, well, what's happening? Where is, where is God? Do you, ever, do you ever feel like that sometimes in your own life and things isn't going, well, God, where are you? What's happening? I'm struggling here. Struggling to, I'm struggling with money. I'm struggling with, I'm struggling with life. I'm struggling with my health. Where are you, God? Where's the miracles? Look, I'm, 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 I'm ill. I've been ill for far too long. I, I've, I go, where's God? I mean, we can identify with Gideon. Don't just look back at me. I can't identify with Gideon. Oh God, what's going on? I'm doing, I'm doing my best. And sometimes it's just seasons. And that's when, you, that's when you can stand firm, hallelujah, glory to God. And then, because in God's timing, sometimes God will put you through the mill, but I'll tell you this, there's going to come a day when God's going to come and break in there. But there has to come the cry. Now, you have to listen to last week as well. There's a cry and there's a cry. Amen. And I brought that out last week very clearly, and I brought in Hannah into the, into the forefront with that. She'd been crying for years for a child. Crying for years, because she couldn't have a child. Couldn't, she couldn't have a child. She was desperate for a child. In those days, people were desperate for children. New people, it's, it's went the other way, isn't it? Oh, oh goodness sake, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Talking to some people just the other day there, you know, like, no, nah, nah, we're not really interested in kids. It's, it's amazing how that people don't, they're not interested in kids. You know why? Because we're, we're, we're too busy. We're too busy enjoying ourselves, too busy making money. We're, we're too busy living the dream. We don't need children to mess it up. I want to tell you this, when children come into your home, I'm telling you this, you'll know all about it. <laughs> I'm on the grandchildren now and I know all about it. There was two of them in my house first thing this morning, running out to get a quick change and it's like, She's gone up the stairs and the next minute she's ready for falling down the stairs and Ben's just sitting there and I'm running about crazy. Then she's pulling this out and pulling that out and it's, oh God, save me. Been there, got the t-shirt, never got the t-shirt again. Papa. Still living it, living the dream. Thank God for these little ones. They can bring more joy to us than the hassle. And so we can see here, where, where, why is all this? Why is everything went against us? And, you know, and, 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 and God has turned us over to the midnights. And then the Lord turns to him and says this, but go in this might of yours, go in your own strength and you shall save Israel from the hand of the midnights. Hallelujah. I've chosen you, Gideon. I've been watching you. Now we always think that Gideon was a wimp because he was in the wine press. I want to tell you this, Gideon was a mighty man of God. You wouldn't want to mess with Gideon. He wasn't he just some weak and a wimp. They were under the judgment of God, but there was men like Gideon there and they were, they were, they were, they were, they were warriors, but they just hadn't, the warrior hadn't arisen yet. Because the Lord now was just waiting for a moment when the Lord says, right, raise up the warriors. That's why I say, Lord, open up Adullam's caves. It's time, for, Lord, to let the warriors come forth from Scotland. Let the warriors come forth. Let the prophets come forth. This nation needs to be confronted. And I've been praying that for many, many years. This is why I'm excited about this, because it's coming alive to me. And I think maybe the timing is a good timing. It's a good timing for Scotland. We might look and think it's over, it's done, we're worn down. What's the point? You know, I mean, it's like we've lost the fight. Yeah, we have lost the fight until the Lord comes. And then when God comes by his spirit and stirs us up, hallelujah. And then he's going to put a bit of fight in us, men, women, the church. Well, for those who are waiting for them and for those who have got their proper attitude, I might add, there's a lot of people who've got a bad attitude. They'll be sitting on the sidelines. But here's this man. And now the Lord turns to him and says, go in the strength that you have. You know, it's dead easy to look down on yourself. And that's why I was encouraged. Oh, it's dead easy. We, we don't see that. We don't see that warrior within us. Oh, I just, I just feel like a wimp. I, I, I mean, I don't feel very good about myself. But it's not really what I feel. It's what he says. Amen. Rise up, mighty man of valor. 
Oh, mighty warrior, mighty man of valor. You know, sometimes we need to hear those words, don't we? Words are powerful, Ian. Words are powerful. And I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you this, and especially when it comes from the Lord of glory. And this wasn't just an angel. A lot of people think this was an epiphany moment. That this was a manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ pre-incarnation that, that he came. And this was the one that was addressing him. Hallelujah. Go in your, go in your strength and go in the, my strength. You don't have to do that. And it says this, have I not sent you? Have I not sent you? I've got a wee bit on that here as well. You know, it's like there's a lot of people, you know, that it's to be sent or have they just went? There's a lot of people running the world today claiming this and claiming that and just believing, that, you know, there's a fine line between actually somebody just going and there's somebody when it's sent, the sent man, hallelujah. When God sends them, when God visits us with someone and God has put his hand on someone's life, I believe we'll see that in the past. We'll see it just now as well, where God is going to raise up warriors. God raises up leaders. That's part and parcel. The Bible's all through it. You know, New Testament as well, leaders. There are 12 apostles. Paul, the, the great leaders, Titus, Timothy. God raises up leaders and Scott, God still uses leaders today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And now this man, Gideon, and he's, he's now he's looking at himself. And, he, and then he, he wants to go and get a sacrifice. We're going to just finish there. I did say I'm going to, I don't want to be rushing away for this as well. But I want to tell you, there's a fine line between the flesh and the spirit. Usually when you see God's men, God's men are humble men. Humble men. And it's not as if this man was a whim by any means. It was, who am I? Who am I that I should go? <laughs> who, am, who am I that I should be, that I can go and, and, and take on this enemy? And he goes, I'm the least in my father's household. You see how he's like, and he, and he goes, but who am I? Funny enough, Moses said the same thing, didn't he? <laughs> the great man Moses. When God says, Moses, I'm going to use you. And Moses says, who am I? Lord, Lord who am I? How can I? Will Pharaoh listen to me? You know, will, will Israel listen to me? Lord, surely. And the Lord just says, but I'll be with you. But I'll be with you. But I'll be with you. Glory to God. Listen, the same God that says he's going to be with them, it's going to be with us. Can I say again, ladies and gentlemen, hallelujah. God is no respect to a person. God is just looking for someone. As D.L. Moody said, when somebody said to him, and then he's here and he says, the world's yet to see what God can do with a man who's totally committed to him. And I want to tell you this, and D.L. Moody says, I am going to be that man. There was just a witness in his spirit. He says, and he, was, he worked in a shoe shop. Uh, uh, you, know, and, you know, there was nothing special with D.L. Moody. He never had great degrees. He never had great education. But there was a man there that says, Lord, I'm going to be that man. Now, the rest is history. We don't know the work. He then started to seek God with an earnestness. Hallelujah. He started getting himself into that place with the Lord. And the rest is history. You just need to read about D.L. Moody. So God is no respect to the people. God is looking, he's looking, for, he's looking for people right now who are going to surrender themselves, who are going to get before him, who are going to put in the time. Hallelujah. You know, anybody that goes to university, you need to put in the time. Unless you're studying. I've got a guitar in the house. It stares at me. It sits in the corner. We've got it as an ornament now. I got it when I was 40. I liked the idea. I thought I could be a wee bit of David and play a bit of guitar and sing some songs to myself, even though my voice is rubbish. But even still, but I, never, I, was, I couldn't put in the time. So that just sits there and it's a testimony against me. It just sits there and stares at me. I'm 64, 24 years ago, and it stares at me every time I come into the room. I keep saying, I better do something about this. <laughs> Dust it. <laughs> the only way you're going to learn to play the guitar is hard work, practice. And that goes with anything in life. You want God to use you? Then you better get on your knees. You better start seeking the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and then leave it to the Lord. If God's got business with you, then just say, I like to stand before the Lord in the morning and say, Lord, see if you get business with me. Here I am. And I got up early and, I'm, you know, and, I, and I stand before him and I like to say that to him, Lord, see if you get business with me, then I'm here. Here I am. And then I'll get in my time of prayer. Amen. Then I, can, I just say, well, I'm here. So if you get business with me, I don't, I don't want to be anything, that, I don't want to be anything out with what the Lord wants for me. Again, it's God's choice. And you come before the Lord, then God will reveal his will to you. Praise God. Looking at the time. And we're just going to finish with that. Can I encourage all of us today? And it sounds as if it's there, but listen, 
there will come a time, we can all go through difficult times, but there will come a time when all of a sudden, when you just get before the Lord, when you cry out to him, listen to me, there's this cry that God is waiting for for this nation. I've said it for some time, there's a cry. We're not there yet. Cry with a capital C. It says they cried out and they cried out, but then it says at the end of 6, it says when they cried out, God heard them. There's a cry got to come from Scotland. A cry. It needs to be a, a, a cry that God will respond to. God is going to respond to this nation. God is going to respond to this nation because this nation's got a special place in the heart of God. I believe it. I believe it. Scotland is a nation of warriors, but we're a nation of wimps. We've been battered down. We've been worn down by the enemy and we've been lost. We're positioning God as a church and men and women alike. We're just downbeaten and we've lost that sense of and we're waiting for an intervention from the living God. And I'm trusting God for an intervention. I'm, 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 I'm trusting God that there's going to be again when the Lord's going to rise up and he's going to come and he's going to rescue us. Hallelujah. He's going to come and he's going to start to raise up the John Knoxes of yesterday. He's going to raise up the Samuel Rutherfords. He's going to raise up the covenant and spirit that our fathers once had. He's going to raise up great men and women of God again. And I tell you this, watch out, devil, for God's going to do something in the land of Scotland, but he's waiting for the cry. And that cry has to come from you and it has to come from me when you get sick of your position and you cry out to him and say, God, you need to do something in my life. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your word afresh today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Father, that you have got unfinished business with us and with our nation. I thank you, Father. Yes, we can go through difficult times, but there will come a time when you will come to our aid. I pray, Father, that you will, Lord, touch your people today. I pray you will stir them up, Lord. Even as Timothy writes to, uh, Paul writes to Timothy, stir up the gift of God. I pray, Father, something will be stirred up, Lord God, in every single one of us today. Father, Lord God, that we will rise up. That no longer will we hide in our caves and our rocky cliffs. Lord, no longer will we hide in the forest. But Lord, we'll rise up, Lord God, Father, and we'll take the open field for your glory, for your praise, and for your honor. Bless your people now, Lord, I pray. In the glorious name of Jesus. Thanks for watching. If you've been challenged today, then please drop a message so that we can help support and pray for you. And also, remember to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next message.